Hey there from Walla Walla, Washington. Hey, I saw something coming more than 10 years ago, and that's with this device here. This is a Proco Rat, and not only just a Proco Rat, it's a white face rat, and it's got the 308 chip in it and that makes it extremely valuable. Now this one here was uh, made about 1983 before they discontinued the chip. And now this thing's worth between one and two thousand dollars because when they finally did come out with the replacement 308 chip, it wasn't as good. Okay, and it gets even worse. <laughs> I've kind of been following uh, automotive and uh, motorcycles too, like Harley Davidson, and I, I was made aware that like a, a 10 or 15 year old uh, Harley Davidson uh, with fuel injection and the computers and all that stuff, all this stuff's happened in the last 15 years. Um, if the turn signal module goes out on that, on that Harley, it shuts down everything. Uh, all these things are connected. And of course, it's dangerous to ride your Harley without the turn signals working. So the motorcycle won't work. And yeah, okay, you gotta replace the box, except for the box is discontinued. And uh, I was, <laughs> I was uh, watching a, a, a channel, a mechanics channel, as referring to another channel that I've yet to watch, but I've heard of these things. It's like a, a new Ford pickup uh, got condensation in the taillight, and it caused uh, too much resistance, and it burned out the module for the taillight, which caused a cascading effect with all these other um, interconnected modules, they go on a loop. So if something goes bad, the rest of them can go bad. So this uh, Ford pickup, uh, it was made within the last probably five, 10 years anyway, uh, ended up costing over $5,000 uh, to repair all that stuff uh, from uh, what would be an 1157 uh, taillight bulb <laughs> with that context. And of course, probably an entire replacement taillight that's, you know, three or four hundred bucks because I'm sure you can't replace the bulb. I don't know, this stuff is getting pretty crazy. But that's in a pickup truck, that's a, a utility vehicle. And um, what's going to happen, uh, you can just see it coming, that uh, like the motorcycles, you know, the, uh, the Harley dealers here, and even the, the guy that uh, uh, works on them uh, aftermarket style, won't work on anything uh, much older than 10 years old. You know, they can't get the components. If you do get the components, they're no good. Just all kinds of, really a, a, a big headache. And um, it kind of reminds me, um, of uh, a friend of mine got a hold of this car, and it's one of the worst cars ever made. It's uh, kind of cool looking, a Pontiac Fiaro. And this guy, I don't know, he tried to fix it, and he pulled all the wires out of it. You know, he just made it so it couldn't be fixed. And he had computers more than you'd think back, uh, I, don't, I don't know, that's like a 70s car, I think, I don't know. But anyway, he had fuel injection and all that, and this old guy got a hold of it, and he goes, well, he <laughs> cut all that stuff off. He's got a machine shop, and he uh, put a points distributor and a Weber carburetor on this thing, and uh, drove, uh, drove it around until it caught on fire, which is something <laughs> that those cars did. <laughs> but uh, you can take, if you're clever, and it's not legal, but it's, <laughs> if you're, if no one's gonna stop you doing it to your own vehicle, is uh, if you have to uh, uh, convert your vehicle uh, so it, it runs, if, if the uh, 
if you can't get the computer chips. And it, it was really interesting. A couple of years ago, I was up in Montana in a small town, and this guy had this little lot there, and I noticed these kind of newer cars. And there was like uh, was some foreign cars. There was uh, a couple of those Jaguars, and uh, there was uh, like a Saab and a Volvo, and, and and some American cars in a really good shape. And uh, I go, wow, those are uh, those are nice cars. Are, are you gonna are you gonna sell them? He had one there that was kind of interesting, and uh, uh, a Porsche. Boxster, that's what that was. And I asked him, well, what's with those cars? And he says, these cars, I, a friend of his has a salvage business or something. He goes, every one of them, it'll cost more than uh, the car's worth to fix them. And it's almost all um, uh, uh, electronic problems. Of course, with some of them, it could be uh, um, Mechanical problems too, like uh, engines that are too expensive to fix, like some of the foreign cars and stuff like that. But uh, it's kind of laughing what the guy talked to, and I go, "Well, you know, I go, you know, you could Americanize them and put a V8 in those things." He goes, "That's exactly what what's going to probably happen to these things." And uh, you know, you can, you can take that uh, sob or something like that, and put a put a Chevy engine in it and a transmission. That's the things that we can do, you know. We can, we can do those things. So that, that's kind of encouraging to me. And I just thought I would share that with you. And, uh, you know, if you find a, a white face rat in a junk store cheap, pick it up. They don't make those chips anymore, you know. <laughs> and I think that kind of goes for uh, machinery too. You know, that's something to consider. Um, at a whim of industry, uh, all the chips you can get today, you might not be able to get tomorrow, and that it seems to be exactly the case. But fortunately for me, right here. I have a, a little job to do in this. Let me take this this here. Maybe I can hold it up here like that. I got this camera on a, a Noga Big Boy, and it works pretty good. Big uh, uh, heavy indicator base. Well, so I, I got it. This is a, I'm not sure if this was a aftermarket uh, fall arrest. But I've seen a lot of these, and they kind of got almost a generic mount. And this thing drops right onto the axles and lathe here. I, I picked this up off eBay. So I need to just trim this right here so it won't interfere with the cross, the cross slide. And I'm going to use my recycled mill here. So I'll get that in there, and uh, we'll make that cut. Get some action going here. Get some oil circulating through the machine. <laughs> I might, I might want to extend that just a little bit. We'll see how that goes. I'll go ahead and tighten it so I don't forget, huh? That's good. Okay. I'll set this camera up a little differently. Well, it seems like it's either going too fast or too slow the way old machines are. I'm going to trim some of this away. I got a little block of wood here so it doesn't ring. I'll start uh, moving it up. At some point, this camera shut off. But I'm uh, going to repeat um, on this uh, follow rest so I can. Uh, Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna have to hurry up here. Uh, Chloe uh, wants me to take her for a walk over the duck pond. So I'm gonna, I just milled this uh, flat here and I wanna break that edge. So it's not uh, sharp. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do. That's getting better. Get that I, did. Hey, I don't know if this is uh, an antique. Or I've seen quite a few of these in different sizes. But you can adapt these to many ways. And I'll show you in a minute. What I'm going to do here. Look at all the sharp edges. You can't see this. <laughs> but that's a that's a bearing surface there. Hold on, Chloe. Hey Chloe, come on. Come on in here and say hello. I don't know if we'll get her in here. Okay, we'll try that on. Okay, I'll try to slip that on. Better back this off. Get an idea how this goes. Oop, I'm gonna get this uh, short tool out there for sure. Okay. Now it goes like this. Get my other hand around here. See? Okay, where's that? Uh, I have a big old wrench here somewhere, I probably packed it off. Where'd that go? I have no idea. Well, anyway, I can use my fingers. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, I got the, uh, right here. I've got an old time ratchet and I can snug this down. So you can uh, uh, adjust this. Let's get this snug on one of them anyway. Okay, so you can adjust this like that. And instead of fingers, let's see if I can get this around here so you can see this. Just something like that. Let's see, tilt it down. It's got this plate that goes on there. And I'm gonna bolt another little brass plate to this. Okay, it's kind of clumsy. So this goes, this uh, plate bolts on. And then you can adjust it with, uh, with this and these two screws and this tilt. Let's see if I get the center up there. and get it through. You see, I don't know if you can see, but the center's just poking through there. So you kind of do a little combination of stuff. And this isn't super strong, but if you snug it down and you're just doing right stuff, it, it's strong enough. Now, the other problem you can have with these and that's on the tool pull side. And um, I believe I cleverly have that solved. <clears throat> Let me get this out of the way. 
with this uh, see this is what I was trying to do here right there and um, I think I just need a little nick right down here and I'll have all the clamps I need but let's see I can slip this uh, flat top KDK thing in there and clear my bundle of stuff here or a large uh, life center you know to get on the end of something you really got to juggle stuff around with uh, with these fall rests and I think this is uh, I envision this will work and it looks like it will work just fine <laughs> okay <laughs> that's my uh, little thing I'm doing here right now and I'll be back with more I want to do some long threading and uh, the the Monarch 10 double E with a 20 inch uh, length you don't have an awful lot of room to do stuff like this like I do with this axle set okay I'll, I'll be back and I hope you guys have a good morning Chloe and I'll go over to uh, let's see if we can find her we'll go find her Hey, Chloe, what a mess. It's getting better. <laughs> this is going to close this door. Hey, Chloe, where are you? <whistles> hey, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Okay. I gotta pick her up, get her across the street.